so for today's video I am as you all know an autistic person I was diagnosed with autism and ADHD at the age of 19 and I will be reacting to Chris Packham's documentary inside our autistic minds and I haven't yet seen it, so this is going to be a completely blind reaction. I haven't seen it, I have seen content that other people have made. I hope it's good, I've heard a lot about it to be honest. So yeah, uh, I hope you enjoy this video, and um, yeah. Okay, so this is series one, episode one of Inside Our Autistic Mind. What I see is different. Because I'm seeing every trunk, every branch. This is a big one, this especially around autistic people, um, because as a little bit, if you don't already know my diagnosis story, I am still yet to make a YouTube video on that. Um, the whole reason I was diagnosed is because I had I made an attempt on my life. So being able to include that in the documentary is uh, is, is a big thing. Okay, I, I have such a high hope for this documentary, so we'll see see what I really think about it. Just a quick one though, like the one thing that I struggle with with being autistic is a lot of people jump to watching comedies and stuff as the sort of background noise and like the kind of distractions and stuff so you know when you just put on like something comfort, like a comfort movie or something, a lot of people go towards um, comedy and the one thing that I struggle with as an autistic person is comedy because I don't actually get the comedy. This is a pure example of how a set of autistic traits is a spectrum, not a linear scale from less to more. Masking or camouflaging is when autistic people consciously copy the behaviour and mannerisms of others. I just want to like put in here as well that being, I, I mean I'm unsure as to um, when this person was diagnosed but for me having a late diagnosis at the age of 19 meant that I was masking with my entire family right from day one so I have never actually been in the situation of being able to fully unmask because I'm aware that my family are still very much under the kind of thoughts of like if I've been fine and I've done it before why can't I just act normal now if that makes sense not in those exact words and I understand why they think that because uh, even to this day, my mind is like, well, I don't recognise that I struggled with it and I was so easy, like easily able to just go out and spend time with friends 24-7 and go out whenever I wanted to without feeling overwhelmed or whatever. So why can't I do it now? And I think that's a really important, that's a really important topic to discuss because I didn't realise I was autistic back then. I didn't realise that with the suicidal thoughts and the depression and the low mood and the anxiety that I experienced back then was actually me being overwhelmed and beginning to burn out. Um, whereas I do know that now. So I'm limiting that experience with those emotions to be able to better be able to unmask and to value and respect my own boundaries. and. Unfortunately, I don't think that there's ever going to be a time when I can fully unmask around my family at any point ever. Um, I am very lucky that there is uh, one or two people that I have met um, whose names both weirdly begin with A, uh, who I feel that I don't have to mask around and I really, really like that and I'm very, very lucky to have that. And I'm very privileged to be in a position where I have met people that I can comfortably unmask around. I think what people don't realise is that there are a lot of places who do this. Be fellow in innocuous and you'll go about whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can be in my own little bubble. For many. Which is the main, the, like, amazing thing about being comfortable with other autistic people. They don't have to be autistic people. It's the amazing thing about being able to be comfortable and to unmask around, like, other people because with those people you can engage in stuff like parallel play which means that you literally don't talk but you're in the same room and you just get home and do with your own thing and that is a huge huge thing for me and that has been something that not once have I ever had in any previous relationships or friendships and I'm very lucky with the relationship that I am in um, that I can 
do that and I can be myself. So yeah, that's a very important thing, especially for a lot of autistic people. Autistic people. Unmasking means going a Even though our chats are a little one-sided, I genuinely feel we're building a rapport. Well, I might do a photo. Are you able to look round the side? I think that's a it's another important thing to realise, is that even if a conversation's one-sided and you're speaking with someone who's non-speaking or non-verbal, it's still a conversation and that means so much to the person who is non-verbal and non-speaking. To expand my own understanding of masking, I've come to Limpsfield Grange, the only state school in the country exclusively for autistic girls. Oh, wow. What's going on with them, whether they're flying under the radar happily or whether they're really, really struggling. Yeah, we need... The, mo the big issue is, is that there are so many people assigned female at birth that go to GPs and they go to doctors and they ask for help and they ask and they say I think I might be autistic would it be okay if you could put me in to be diagnosed or put me in to be tested and doctors will refuse I have had so many issues right the way through my life with doctors outright refusing me telling me it's all in my head telling me I've got depression it took me to tell the doctors that I have suicidal thoughts for them to even do anything about it, for them to even refer me to cameras. Not the fact that I was self-harming, or the fact that I had eating problems, or the fact that I was genuinely being bullied, I was really, really unhappy in myself, but it was the fact that I had to actually go to the lengths to tell him that I have suicidal thoughts, for him to even do anything about it. And CAMS didn't even help. CAMS misdiagnosed me with anxiety and depression. And yes, I have anxiety, but the anxiety that I actually have is more just being overwhelmed and being overstimulated rather than actual anxiety. I'm not depressed. I was just an undiagnosed autistic person in today's science society. And it really, it really bothers me and it really gets to me because it's just, there are so many people being failed. I hate crying and I hate crying on camera because it's just not something that I want my platform to be. But if there were more things like that, like, my school, my whole entire school life was awful. Um, I had such a bad experience and unfortunately homeschool just wasn't an option because my mum's also chronically ill, she wouldn't have been able to handle it. Which is fine, but if there were more resources like this and there were more places like this around the UK, then, like, so many people would actually be able to have a chance at being happy and being able to speak freely and be themselves and it just sucks. when you see something in any kind of news about autism it's usually not great. I went into this knowing how other people felt about it and knowing that everyone had given it such amazing reviews so I went into it with high hopes and it still exceeded my expectations of it. I think the bit that got me the most was about the schools and being assigned female at birth uh, with a late diagnosis of autism or just a diagnosis of being autistic in general with masking because that is something that I struggled with my entire life and no one did anything about it and my parents tried but parents can only go so far until it's up to the school or healthcare industry or whatever and I got failed in by both. Seeing that there was a school like that, and the fact that... <laughs> and the fact that there was an option that meant that I didn't have to struggle as much, but unfortunately there's just not enough of those options worldwide to be able to cover, or at least nationwide, to be able to help more people, and more people that are assigned female at birth hurts a lot because I think having lived experience with being autistic and there's so many struggles but the one part that got me the most about being autistic is the education system and going through systems within education that are supposed to be there to help autistic people but they are useless and hopeless and how 
people in schools just because they work with autistic kids and autistic children and autistic people even autistic adults they automatically think that they've got such a wide understanding of autism when in fact they are completely bloody clueless at everything it just sucks so bad um and that is something that really needs changing with that being said i hope you enjoyed this video i know it's something different and it's not the happiest of videos considering i'm crying <laughs> But I really wanted to film my reaction to this as I haven't se I've seen people's thoughts and opinions on it, but I haven't actually seen anyone's reaction on it. So if you have any comments at all, please leave them in the comments box below. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.